Teresa. Somehow I'm on a VidCon panel, and this is what I'm doing right now. found the job of being a father. Oh, it's awesome. And I'm like legit too. I'm the stay at home dad while, while mom goes and works. He's awesome though. He makes it really easy. I hear I hear that a lot. Like there are people are like, oh, he is such a cool kid. I'm worried about having another one because the other one probably is going to be like everything that Maestro wasn't. Hey, she's got you. Can I have a fiver? Thank you. Can you go give around fives? Give my girl fiver. Look, he's asking for a fiver. Oh, no. denied. <laughs> <laughs> with, a, with a no on top of it, man. Want a Todd five? Yeah, Todd five. Oh! oh. That, that counts. Sing. <laughs> okay, it's time for the best fast food of the trip. Oh, pot belly. Pot belly. Pot belly. Ooh, buddy. Pot belly. Does this make you want to have children even more? I want to have babies when I'm ready. Particularly when I, uh, when I don't have $20,000 of business debt. <laughs> there it is. Oh boy, Todd. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh buddy. Mmm. Mmm. Kelsey. Mm hmm. I just attached a GoPro to the front of the car. Do you think it will still be there next time we stop? I hope so. That clamp's pretty, pretty strong. The problem is that that clamp is also really old, and there's a pin in the middle of it that doesn't stay exactly where it needs to, and if it slides over a little bit, it causes the clamp to like go weird and sideways. So if the vibration of the car moves that pin enough, it could just fly off. Why are you doing this then? Eh, it's kind of an old GoPro at this point though. I'm saying it's had a good life. If now it reaches its demise, it will have still accomplished many great things. But there's so many great things it could still accomplish. I think you could say that about any death. This has been a very spendy trip electronically, so I feel like risking losing another item just is no good. No risk, no reward. Sometimes, not always. That's the problem with idioms. They don't always apply. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me, but the pen is mightier than the sword. They're good idioms, Brent. temperature light just came on and now the car is not wanting to go very fast. It's making kind of a bad whirring noise. This isn't fun. I guess I'm gonna get off the freeway here and try to let it cool down a bit. The gauge doesn't show that it's very hot but this light came on and the throttle is not responding. It just makes that noise and it won't go any faster. So right now I'm doing like 20 miles under the speed limit because I can't go any faster. Come on. Come on. I am actually flooring it right now. Oh boy. Gotta park in the shade. Is there any shade to park in? Hey, it made it. Yes? Yep. Yeah. The lady in there says, sweetie, do you know who you look like? I was like, I could probably guess. She's like, okay, you guess. And I was like, uh, Anna Kendrick. She's like, yes! <laughs> well, I don't know what to do. Hello? Yeah. Okay. Right. So apparently what's happening when that light comes on mm -hmm. 
is the oil is getting too hot. So turning the car off doesn't cool the oil down as fast as leaving the car on in neutral because there's some kind of pump. She said that leaving the car on in neutral, eventually the light should turn off. And the reason that the car was going slow is because it was decreasing the uh, performance of the transmission system. Now that the light has gone off, perhaps we can continue. How much do you want to bet that the GoPro stays on the car? I think it'll stay. Oh, I also think it's gonna stay, so there's no point in betting. Todd's pointing at us. He's good to go. Oh, he doesn't know. All right, let's get the hay out of hay. Staying so far, going 60 miles an hour, going 70 miles an hour. It's 80 miles an hour right there. Do you think you would feel one way or the other if your children were extroverts or introverts? I don't think I would feel one way. I feel like if all of your kids were like, go, 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 and you had one kid who was like, I want to play home and program with daddy, you'd be like, you're my favorite child. You always hear people ask mom, who's your favorite child? And I'm like, oh, I love all you kids equally. I'm sure that secretly parents have favorite children. I know that I am my mom's favorite child. Well, you're your mom's only, only child. child. She considers Ryan and Jason her children. Right. But you're the only person who is her own DNA. Do you feel like your dad has a favorite child? I don't know. My dad is very Christian, and all four of us kids turned out to be atheists. So while I know that he loves all four of us, there's always going to be that kind of divide between us. Because something that is very important to him, something that is a part of the fabric of his existence is just completely not at all a part of the existence of any of his children. My parents have very different political views, and they're like, oh, well, you just don't talk about it, and you let the kids figure it out for themselves. When Ryan and I broke up for religious and political views, I was just like, no, I'm not dating anyone ever again who has drastically opposing views with myself. I guess for people who are able to make that work, good for them. I have no idea how my parents do it. I, I don't think that I could ever make anything like that work. No. Up to like two and a half years of Ryan and I's relationship, we were still mushy brain teenagers that just wanted to touch our genitals together. So like, okay. politics and religion meant nothing to us. We didn't care. We just wanted to go have fun with each other and enjoy each other's company and like, mess around. I think Ryan had already had some views set in, but I was starting to come into my decisions and views for the world. So I was being really vocal about it and wanting to talk to him about it. And in that, he and I like had this underlying unspoken tension of, I believe in God, I don't believe in God. I want to vote for Donald Trump. I want to vote for Bernie Sanders. This headbutting that was happening, but neither of us were really talking about it. When that did ultimately arise, it was just like, pew, like over the edge. So now knowing how that type of situation works out, I want nothing to do with it. I remember for the first portion of us talking, I was like, this human is everything that Ryan is not. Yay! He's an atheist. He likes Bernie Sanders. He's attractive, he loves video games, he played D&D, like all of these things that Ryan would like. <gasps> oh no. We lost it. The GoPro flew off. It flew off. Kelsey. Um, we're gonna go try and find it. You didn't want to go back. I made you turn around. We're gonna go get it. Yeah, I think it's a lost cause. No. Well, if anything, we can film it and say, look, we found it. Maybe it just bounced only on the, the suction cup and all the video's fine. Uh-huh. And uh, you're gonna have a really cool video of a GoPro flying off of your car. Yep. Yeah. We found it! <laughs> Todd got the camera. What does it look like? It looks like it's totally intact, except the screen's f***ed up and the power button's f***ed up. I mean, as long as the SD card is fine, then we got the footage. The SD card is in there and it looks fine to me. Cool. <laughs> so what's the moral of the story? Always go back for GoPros? If I'm gonna suction things to the car, 
I should probably also attach it to the car in a secondary fashion. They make these little loop things that you can hook onto the GoPro case and then like wrap it around the uh, mirror. I wonder if the battery pack's still, no, still up and running. So this thing looks like it yeah. is usable still. It's just this little piece here. There you go, you got footage. So uh, it's a little bit yeah, busted. It's, <clears throat> it's coming apart like right there, but well, We'll find out. <laughs> I guess we'll see what the footage looks like. Okay. How did you feel about all the scenery? I liked it <laughs> a lot. Maybe it was when we first got into the desert. I was like talking about how deadly it seemed and like how it was like if you walked down into that and you were just like in the desert, you would die like so quickly because it would get dehydrated. I don't know. It just it just like was not a safe place. And then I was also talking about how beautiful it was, and I was like, Todd, it's so beautiful. I just want to die here. Like I'm just gonna walk out into the desert and just die. And so he had such. <laughs> reaction to that since I've been seeing more beautiful things. I've just described multiple ways that I would die. Did she wanted to go find a grizzly? Yeah. Just give him all... Fall down a mountain. Roll down a mountain until I got impaled by a, a dead tree. Wow. Yeah. Pretty <laughs> it's, graphic. It's gotten more graphic. I was saying earlier that I would be content to just continue driving around the United States for the next year. I wanted to keep seeing things. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready to go to sleep. Hey buds. Hey buds. We made it buds. We did it buds. Good job buds. Todd? What are we doing this for? Let's do oh, it. oh, a real hug. Oh. Ooh. oh Thank you very much for all of your hard work. Thank you very much for all of your hard work. I'll thank you later. Wink, wink, wink. Uh. <laughs> so now I got to take you back to your parents' house and then you're going to get your car and drive back to Woodhouse. Technically, aren't you moved in as of the first? I guess, yeah. It's after the first, yeah. so you now live at Woodhouse. Ooh, Congratulations. Thanks. Welcome to the club. Th you going to leave oh. me hanging? I get to put my vote in for Bucket Light. Death to Bucket Light. I don't know what should go there, but it's definitely not Bucket Light. Abby really likes Bucket Light, so I think one day while Abby's away at work, we should 
move Bucket Light into her room. And when she gets home, she has a Bucket Light hand. Yeah. I was imagining it would just be hanging, it would be, it would replace her light. Oh. It would be her light in her room. I don't know if she wants that. Either she wants Bucket Light or she doesn't want Bucket Light. That's just how it's gonna be. <laughs> okay. How does it feel to be back in Missoula? I'm so excited to sleep in a bed that I am familiar with. Like that alone is just gonna make my evening. <laughs> I assume that you feel differently than I do about like traveling and feeling at home and feeling comfortable where you are. But being away from places that I consider home or homey feels a little bit draining. As long as I have my computer and something I can film with, yeah. I'm pretty comfortable wherever I am. I don't feel much attachment to things like clothes or blankets. Even if Woodhouse burned to the ground, I'd be like, eh, that sucks. Okay, I'll go live somewhere else now. Even with the computer that I have, all of the really important stuff is saved in Dropbox in the cloud, if my computer just exploded, got obliterated, or burned down in Woodhouse, if I just got another computer, I would have access to the same information. I would be able to work on videos just the same. It would take a while to like sync all the footage again, but I could be up and running again within a day. For me, since I was born and raised here, Woodhouse will not feel like home for a long time. Polson never felt like home, ever. Not for a single second. I think what's interesting is that I kind of liked your apartment because I guess it was the first living space that I associated with you. So I probably have more sentimental value associated with your Polson apartment than you do. When I was there, I felt comfortable there, but it never felt like home. I don't know that I feel like I have a home. I feel like a citizen of the earth. I can go many places on this planet and like nestle myself in and feel really comfortable there. Like when I got stuck in Paris, there was that family that was nice enough to let me stay with them for months. And like by the second day that I was there, I was like, okay, like this, this feels like my current base of operations, cool. And before that, when I was living in London with Alex and Charlie, like that felt very much like this is, this is where I'm based right now. And at no point during those times did I feel like I was displaced. And I think what allows me to feel that way is that my relationships with people don't hinge very much on physical proximity. Like I can make a connection with someone and then leave and not see them for a year. And then when I see them again, like I haven't seen Josh Voyles' brother in a year, but it feels very much like it's picking up right where we left off. What ends up feeling most important to me is just the people that I have in my life. I feel the opposite and that I have to be in close proximity to these people. That's the reason I kept driving down to see you at practically all the time and why two days ago when I found out that my brother was coming into town, I started crying <laughs> because I was so excited to see him since I hadn't seen him in so long. If I found out that my brother was for sure gonna visit Missoula, I'd be like, Cool, now we can like do the thing that we do separately, but now in the same space. Here we are. I'll see you in 15 minutes at the house. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hey, nice new phone. Oh, thanks. Is that the, does it have a case on it or is that like the shiny black one? This is the shiny one. Mm. They only had this one in stock. Phone gotten stolers can't be choosers. <laughs> That was real smooth. Yeah, thanks. So did you have to spend the full amount and get that? Or mm -hmm. did they... The guy who stole my phone stole over $1,000 from me, which is more money than we made at VidCon. Oh, no. so, so your VidCon trip was negative. If you look at just the financials, yes, but I think we walked away with a lot of connections that will prove to be useful business things in the future. These are the pickles that Caitlin and Sari started before we left. So last time I saw these, they were cucumbers. <laughs> I do 
tastes like a pickle. It's a little bit sweeter than like the kosher dill pickles that you get from Walmart. Yeah, that's what I thought too. It's almost like a mix between a dill pickle and a sweet pickle. I prefer like the really salty garlicky pickles. Mm -hmm. I don't really like sweet pickles, mm -mm. but it's a small enough amount of sweet that it's okay. <clears throat> and it kicks you with vinegar at the end, mm -hmm. which I see you have experience. If you guys remember the Helix mattress that I ordered before I left, it has arrived, but it's all packed up in this box. I don't know if there are instructions anywhere on it about how to do this. I'll probably save this for tomorrow. All right, cat. Right. <laughs> 